right. Last week we started to learn in the lab about pages and segments. So pages are basically pieces of your RAM. So uh, depend, they depend on the architecture. But for either PCs or phones or Raspberry Pis, it's typically four kilobytes. So the idea is to split your memory in small pieces of uh, data, uh, and then so that when you have different programs using your memory, it will be much easier to say, okay, this program is, is using pages one until 3,000, the other program is using pages 4,000 until 7,000, and so on. Why that? Because you can have holes in your memory while you run your programs. So to fit better things in there, you split in little pieces. Uh, therefore, the holes can be uh, solved in a better way. The other concept is segment. So segment is actually a set of pages. But the idea of segment is to have these areas uh, with total size variable. So that would be a function of the code you run. So if you need more area for data, you have a lot uh, you could have a larger data segment. If you need more space for the code, you have a larger code area. If you need a larger stack, you have a lar uh, larger segment for the stack. Okay. But any operating system that you run today implies a combination of segments and pages. So you could say, okay, my code is my code, uh, the binary of my code is in the code section, and that code section is split into small pieces uh, pages, basically. So the idea is that if you can, to, that is, if you want to manage this memory, you can manage the pages. For example, you can, as you can see, you can uh, share pages, you can protect pages, uh, you can protect sets of pages, uh, and so on. You can share pages between processes. And we have done some of the, of some of the experiments in regards to sharing. So we created uh, another process using fork, and those two processes were sharing pages. How? By sharing a variable that is fit on that page. Okay. Protection. You use them protect to protect one particular page, and then you try to write on the variable allocated on that page, and you couldn't, because you protected against writing. How do you write a variable? Just assigning a value to the variable is you are writing to the variable. You are changing the variable. Okay. Any questions so far? So sometimes you have you have big holes left because one program was running and it finished, so you, you have a big hole of space in there. So what you could do is say, okay, I have a big hole here, I have another big ro uh, hole there. How about uh, collapsing the holes? And then you have a larger full space that you could run your program. And that's the idea of relocation. So the idea is to move stuff around uh, so that uh, you can have larger areas to run your programs. Sometimes moving means move from the memory. Move to the disk, then you have a big hole, and then you bring back from the disk. So you could, you could do that all the times. Uh, it's not a good idea to do all the times because it will make things very slow. Also, you could do sharing. Okay, the last bullet. 
which is basically uh, having that particular region shared amongst uh, shared among sorry, several programs. If you have loads of uh, loads of libraries, why should you replicate the areas of those libraries many times if those libraries are used by multiple programs? Why? You shouldn't. You should share the libraries because then you save space. And this is what happens in operating systems. Sometimes you are running Windows, but Windows ro loads several libraries with lo lots of system calls inside those libraries. Then when you invoke the library or invoke something, it's already in RAM. So you don't have to reload it again, you understand? And if it's already there, you don't have to replicate to use more space for the purpose. Uh, when this started, this type of stuff started, it was because memory was expensive. You couldn't have a computer like with bytes or kilobytes or even megabytes of RAM. But today you have the luxury to run even stuff like in your phone using 4, 8 gigs RAM, depending on your phone. I'm not talking about hard drive, I'm talking about RAM. Uh, but to keep these guys on, you have to have you have to inject energy. So you have to have a big battery. So it could be heavier, it could be expensive. It could be big, right? You don't want to bring, instead of carrying a light phone, you want to bring like a brick, star phone, right? With a, and the brick is the battery. Do you, do you want that? Probably not. So that, that is one problem today. Uh, big problem, batteries. So if you can save energy by Minimizing the amount of memory is another good idea. Also, accessing memory is not that cheap. Takes time. Makes things slower, depending. So it all depends on what you want to do. Okay, so the, a good practice is to share libraries. So that's what the operating system uh, will take care. So if it sees that there are libraries, uh, you'll try to share those libraries with other programs. If you are using printf, okay, and some program is using, some program that is running that is also using the library that, use, that it has printf, share it. Okay, questions? If you have your address space represented as a, as a rectangle, right, uh, plus the address space uh, of a process and the process is being controlled by its PCB, process control block, you should coordinate the two things, right? You should coordinate uh, the PCB so that the PCB will be aware of your program, okay? Not only the code part, the top part, but it could be data, it could be the stack. So the PCB also will, should be updated with those information every time you ask for more memory or protect memory or, or so on, okay? So a very important thing is to protect, why? Because it's your data. Are you upset that every time you go to the web, the sites tell you, yeah, we'll keep your privacy every time? Yeah. This is a this is an EU rule. Uh, at least until nothing said. But it's going to be a British rule as well, I'm sure. Uh, but you have to protect your data. So you wouldn't like to download a program and that program is 
tell the company that you use a particular software or you use a particular particular data, scan through your data, right? So protection is fundamentally important, and you don't want some processes to have uh, access of other processes. You could use a machine shared by many people. Okay. In the lab, we don't do any experiment. But you could do a remote shell. You know, you get a terminal. You could do SSH, remote, which is a remote shell, to another computer, your neighbor. And then, once you are allowed to go to the neighbor, it's like you sitting in front of that computer using the resources that computer is offering. It's like you typing and you were running your programs there, like top, PS, GCC, whatever you have, browser, running on that machine. So, would you like the second user to have access to the programs you're running? Certainly not. So, there are companies that offer uh, services <coughs> that you can use their machines. Would you like the users of those machines to have access, access to yours? Probably not. So protection is fundamentally uh, important. Okay. Now, controlling where programs are is something very difficult because you cannot predict the behavior of the programmer. You can, you can, you can have lots of variables allocated, and sometimes you can free all of them. It depends on what the programmer wants, which is impossible to predict. Uh, so every time. The program will request, request something in regards to memory. The operating system should check if that memory is available, where, the, where it's going to get it. Like 10 pages here, 10 pages at this other place, 10 pages there, so, so that the overall amount of memory is going to be allocated. And finally, relocation. If you have to move stuff, like if you have to move contents of pages, it's also something very complicated. Uh, so you, the operating system should have some mechanism in, embedded in there so that this is possible. <coughs> sharing, yeah. There are many advantages, advantages of sharing, which is saving memory, uh, controlling how that memory is going to be used, and also for relocation, if you, if you are sharing, and also relocating, it can be very complicated because you have to update the PCBs of the processes pointing to those locations, since they are different. Any questions on this? So we have done some experiments, very simple experiments, but the operating si the, the reality of the, I mean, the full reality of the operating system is much more complicated, but at least you have some insight, practical, of that part of the operating system. Okay. Instead of me giving you protection of files, which is very easy, you could protect the files, I went to a much more difficult thing, which is protect the memory. So, when you think about your memory, you should think like an array. So, you should you should look into it as an array of addresses. Each address will, will be telling, OK, I'm in this memory position, I'm in this other memory position. So I'm using those pages, I'm using other pages. So you could have a table with the pages you are using. And the pages could be mapped on the memory. So you could separate physical from virtual. When I say virtual address space, it's something virtual. But that virtual thing should be mapped on a real thing, which is your RAM. I have 64 bits of uh, address space. So I can have 2 to the power of 64 addresses to be used, which is a lot. But my computer at home has 16, 8, I don't know, 64 bits, 128 bits, which is less than 2 to the power of 64. 
much less. Okay, so think of, think as your memory as an array, but as a, as as the logical organization. However, this should be mapped to the real RAM, and we'll be looking to that later. Uh, when you run your programs, you create small programs or medium or big programs. Sometimes you want part of the programs to be protected or not. Sometimes you want all open. Some parts of the program are uh, binary codes. You just want them to execute. Other parts are just data. You don't, you don't want data to be executed. You want data to be read and written. Right? So it's a combination of uh, pages plus different sizes because because of because of the program and that's why you use segmentation so you separate your memory in different parts code stack data and then for each of them you use pages yeah. because then it's more organized so if there is a problem with the particular part, you send, uh, you raise a signal say, violation of protection here, like you did the last week, or at least some of you. Because you're trying to write to a position or page where you didn't have the permission to. So one thing is the virtual. The other thing is the physical. What? You could create a program that occupies 10 terabytes. Fine. What? How are you going to run that program if you have like just 8 gig RAM? There should be something that maps, like a function that maps okay, the virtual to the real. Uh, and obviously, uh, the operating system will do that. So, you cannot. So, as an operating system, you should take care of doing that because programmers are not, I mean, are very far from. Uh, they, know, they don't have enough knowledge to do memory management. Okay. People just want to click. They don't want to understand how it works. So you have to have something taking care of it, and that's the operating system. Uh, sometimes, like this case, if you don't have space, which is the summation of your memory, your RAM, plus the hard drive available, you cannot run that program. You could buy a service in, uh, I don't know, Amazon or <laughs> Microsoft or Google and, and ask them, give me those terabytes. I don't know if they offer that. If they don't, you could come up with that. Uh, and you could run your programs some way remotely. Uh, so programs don't care. In general, which is bad. <coughs> Sometimes that behavior affects the performance of the machine. And then the hard drive is there trashing all the time. And they say, oh, this is slow, poor machine. Sometimes the problem is the user. Because it's running programs that you don't need, so what? So remove them, at least. And then you can have a, a bit better performance. Uh, or do one task per time if you cannot do it so that you could fit stuff in your map. But that stops the <coughs> multitasking part. So it's a trade-off. And finally, uh, you could do, s you could employ a particular technique called overlay, which is uh, a technique that allows you to have multiple programs, but you obviously you have to 
keep moving those programs some way so that they will occupy the same memory area uh, but obviously moving stuff moving back moving stuff moving back takes time so it, it's an overhead okay. right to organize the life of programmers the operating system will split uh, your memory so that management is easier so get your memory split into same size memory uh, same size partitions that could be the pages and say okay these pages now will go some pages will go for code some pages will go for stack some pages will go for data uh, so that if you need more memory later it's easy to manage those different parts uh, and you don't have to do in big chunks you manage the small units if you need more you add a small unit you keep adding until you are happy so here i put a table uh, comparing lots of memory management techniques so we'll be looking to all of them. Uh, last week in the lab, we have done a little bit of the, ter of the third one, simple paging. Today we are going to do a bit of virtual memory paging. Okay. Uh, the top ones are really more con conceptual ones, but obviously, if you do paging, you do part you do partition, you do dynamic partition. So you do some sort of partition. So I don't agree with uh, the author, the way he classified, but uh, we are going to, we are following that uh, some way. Uh, among all of them, a very important one is virtual memory paging, which, is we, which we, are, we are going to look into it in the lab today. That basically, basically allows you to run programs that are larger than of your RAM. How can you run a program that is larger than of your RAM? By parts. You load, you, you keep loading. Okay, memory is not full. Keep loading. And you keep using. Keep loading, keep using. If you reach a limit, you say, okay, my memory is full. Then you look into what you have used. And you try to find, for example, okay, I'm not using those positions a lot. So you get those memory positions and you move to the disk. It's like you, it's like you for example, you study for something. You bring 1,000 books. You put all the books on top of, of uh, this table, long table. But then you say, okay, the books that I have used so far, mostly, are these ones. Then you get them and put them here. So that, that table, okay, will not be used anymore. This one will be, so will be, so those ones, you forget a little bit. So you concentrate on this one, okay. So that, those ones you could throw for the moment where you could throw send them to the disk that's called swapping you understand the idea and then you keep in your RAM the ones that you are using the most but suppose now even with this it's memory is full again you, you do the same thing oh okay i don't need this a lot so you try to select some way the ones that you need more the ones you don't you send to the disk Later, when running a program, you could say, oh, okay, oh, I need that one that is that, but I don't have space. So again, you go and say, okay, which one I'm not using a lot? Send that to the disk, now you have a hole. Open that space, bring that one that you need now. Do your side. You could imagine, imagine this like a parking lot, you are the manager of the parking lot, 
Cars are coming in, you know, it's a party day or a game day, full, what do you do? You try to find a hole. And then you tell the guy, okay, park the car there. If it's full, what, what are you going to do? If it would be possible, you should move the car. Suppose you have, you have the tickets. You say, oh, okay, this, car, this guy will stay until midnight. So you can risk and say, okay, I'll send those cars to another party that I, you know, I am associated with. I will send those cars there. There are holes there, why not? Where you can park the new car. So you keep doing that. Do the stuff. But it, obviously it's a risk. It may be the case that you send the car and the guy ca just came. Then you have to tell him, okay, wait a little bit. Give him something coffee. Whilst someone is going to pick the car. And that's what the operating system will do. You send stuff to the disk, and that takes time. And then you see the hard drive on and on. So today we're going to do an experiment based on that. OK, that's why th this is very important. So expect this question on the second exam. You have this question. I'm just introducing the idea. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, the first, you know, the first, first two ones, you could have your program using same size pieces or different size pieces. So, same size partitions or uh, not same size partitions. Uh, if you cannot fit the program in the partitions, what you have to do? Okay. You, you, you should wait then. If you cannot fit and you cannot move partitions, you cannot do anything, you should wait until you have the space. Obviously, you could merge partitions to make a bigger one. So, or you could do the, or you could do overlay, which is, okay, you share this area between two programs. But you should move the programs. As, as you run them. You are running something, you stop it. For example, for time slice, time slice, you stop it. You move everything from memory that that program is using to the disk, that's it. And you move the next program. See, that's a lot of overhead. But you could do it. That's overlay. That's why it's not used anymore. The first one. So, if you keep running the programs, look into these partitions. If you run a program, let's say the bottom position, you run that program, that program has four, four megabytes. Right. Then you have left four megabytes in that partition. Then later, if, you run, if another program uh, with, with like, say, two gigabytes arrives and you want to run it, okay, you, you could fit after that. So you are still left with two megabytes. So after some time, this memory, whatever, whichever way, is going to be filled with spaces and holes. It's like you selling cake, cake, big cakes. One piece of that, one piece of you, at the end you have lots of pieces of everything. Or food in restaurants, if you, if you stop it big, you have, okay, lots of that, lots of this, so have lots of this here, there, of everything. So it, that's, that's a good analogy. That, you know, the fact that you have lots of holes, it's called internal fragmentation. So if you have holes inside the partitions, you have internal fragmentation. Okay, and the problem is wasted space. Because you could merge that part that is left with another partition. Okay, so one way to manage these partitions could be queues. So you could have one queue, you could have multiple queues, you could have queues for the partitions as well. 
You could see this as a supermarket as well, if you like. Multiple cashiers or multiple counters, people queuing. Should I queue for the counter or should I queue? Yeah. So you could you could have something like that. So that you could order the requests for those partitions. Why? Because you have lots of processes. Right? Processes compete for the memory. You have. So that and that is the issue. Okay. And many times, simple programs, they don't use partitions efficiently. So what do you do? Smaller partitions. Okay. Or, I mean, and or variable sized partitions, which is some sort of what uh, you do when you get a set of pages. Okay. So, these are the effects that I have just mentioned, see? The same example with uh, now materialized in a few years. So you see several processes coming and at the bottom a hole. But if process 2 finishes in item E, that hole for process 2 is left. So another process will come, process 4. Uh, just because of the order, it could be fit on the first uh, white space, first hole, so you fit process for in there. Then, one could finish. See, you have a 20 meg partition on top and six in the middle there. You could merge two and have a bigger size partition in case, you, in case a program with that size Chosen, that. so yeah, that's how you dynamically manage the partitions. Now, if you have these processes running little by little with really small, uh, small size partitions that we call pages, you can control this better. Okay. Right. So, just to summarize. With time, memory gets more and more fragmented. Uh, and obviously, the efficiency of utilization of memory, unfortunately, increase. So what you could do is collapse stuff, OK? Uh, and that takes time, consumes uh, time, and CPU, because it's, because who is collapsing is the CPU. The OS is, call, is running a program that collapses stuff. Uh, and sometimes when you collapse stuff, what happens is that you open a hole outside. Do you agree? If you collapse, let's say, 4 and 3 on M, if you push 3 up, you open a hole, a bigger hole there. So the external size is, I mean, obviously it's better, but you could call that external fragmentation. Do you understand? So it's something difficult to, to manage. Uh, it's, not, it's not that simple. Any operating system that you have today has these problems. Uh, so to manage it is now where to send or where to allocate the programs yeah so you could have very simple straightforward technique or, or straightforward techniques uh, best fit first fit or next fit so you could say okay given this is the size of memory I want okay try to find the partition where you have the whole <coughs> with the smallest possible size. So you minimize waste of space. That's best fit. Okay. Or you could go to a very simple one. First fit, that's very simple. First hole you find, you put the program there. It's like parking your car, okay? You say, okay, 
which place I'm going to park my car. I'm going to park on the biggest place or I'm just trying to fit the car on the best position where I minimize the space between the cars. Are you going to do that? Really? Probably not. Maybe first fit is not a bad idea. <coughs> it depends. Finally, you could say next fit. Why? Next fit is okay. Look at the last posi last area of your memory that was occupied, and try to find the next available position. Why? Because some way problems could be related. And they could benefit of some sort of management uh, facility. We'll talk about more uh, later. So here you go. You could have uh, assume that you have a okay. Last block allocated was a block with 14 megabytes, and the block was fit in there, the position pointed by the arrow. Okay. So, right. How would you, uh, how would you allocate a 16 megabyte block? Huh? So you should look for a hole that you could fit 16 megabytes using those algorithms. Okay. So look at the left. Can you fit 16 megabytes on the 12 megabyte hole? Look, look at the top, sorry, on the 8 megabyte hole, the first on the left. Can you fit 16 in 8? No. Can you fit 16 in 12? No. So you keep going. Can you fit 16 in 22? Yes. That is the first fit. The first place you put is that. How much is left? It's left 22 minus 16, which is 6 megabytes. That's, it. That's why you see a 6 megabyte hole. Is this clear? Is this clear? Yeah, I don't get full answers, but that's okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, uh, best fit. Okay. Best fit would be, okay, look into all holes and see where the left area is the smallest one. So we found one there, okay, it's left, 6 mega is left, uh, another one could be that one with 18, then 2 megabytes would be left, then let's keep going, uh, you cannot fit in 8, you cannot fit in 6, you cannot fit in 14, but you could fit in the 36 mega one, Okay, but on that case, you would be left with uh, 20 max. So 20, then 2 max, and 6 max. 20, 2 and 6. W which one is the smallest? 2. That's why that fit will put the partition there. Is this okay? So if I ask you this in the exam, you should be able to tell me, okay, where do I put this? Finally, uh, next fit. So next fit would be based on the last allocated. So the last allocated was on the left. You can see last allocated blocks, 14. Okay, it was. So you should go to the next available that can fit 16. So if you go down, you have eight that you cannot fit, six, 14. So all of them, you cannot fit 16, but you can fit on the last one. Therefore, next fit will fit at the last position. Is this okay? This is very simple. And I assume you like these guys. Why? Because this, is, this can be a program. So I, can, I could ask you, implement a program that. Yeah. Right. All these techniques rely on the addresses. So, think your memory as an array of addresses. Right. That's that's the idea. So, uh, since you're splitting your memory in different parts, each 
of these virtual parts, it could be data parts, code parts, those, we will have some way to say, okay, after uh, partition starts at zero position, or, zero, or address zero, and finishes in address something. So you should have a notion of the boundaries of that, those, those partitions. Okay. So these positions are relative, these addresses are relative to the beginning of that partition. This is what the second thing means. And obviously, we're talking about memory. How can you implement that? Okay. So you need hardware support to do it. So assume that you have your virtual address space, program, data, stack, segments. Your program employs addresses. Do you agree with that? Where are the addresses? If I give you a program and ask you, tell me, Tell me where the addresses are. You don't see any address in the program. You see a program like int, int main, variables, some function there, something, you know, print tabs, calculation. What? Where are, where are the addresses of this program? Where are they? Where are the variables? That's the answer. Yeah. Addresses, uh, I mean, your variables, your code, o o everything, the stack, everything you use in, the, in those programs are placed in memory. So those things are placing addresses uh, of memory, okay? Now, if you are using a particular variable, that variable has a, a memory address, right? So it's like you, you live, you, if I ask you where do you live, you say, okay, I'm living in blah, blah, blah. You give me the address of your house, home, apartment, whatever. And with that, I can tell you, okay, you live in this place. So when you organize a city, for example, if I give you the address or postcode, you exactly know, okay, this guy lives in south, north, whatever. So you, based on the zip, on, on, based on the postal code, you can determine where, where that letter should go. Here you, you have the same thing. Based on the address of the variable, you can exactly determine where or if that variable will be within that area. And that's very important. Why? Because you cannot allow that program to go out of boundaries. Otherwise, this program, for example, if the top part is the code, Okay, if I, if I have a code that some way gets in a weird loop and the code will start to go to the data part, you'll be changing your data without willing to. And that's called burn. Or could be a hacker. More important, your program could go and, uh, and employ the stack. Stack grows up. So if you go up, 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 you mess with your data as well. That's called head, more or less. But you could go further. See, you could go the other side of the stack and try to go exactly here, which could be another process. So your process trying to hack on another process, or because you are willing to, or because it's a bug. And you don't want that. And that's why you protect these areas, okay? How? Using a base register and a bound register, okay? Registers, remember, registers are like memory, harder memory. So they, they keep information, they keep bits. So once you get the address, 
that relative address is the address of your program, of the variables of your program. You get that with the arrow, okay? And you add that with the base register. This way, okay, this way, you'll be guaranteed that your access, your address access, will be within the area covered by the program. Okay, because the base register will tell you, okay, this program should start at this address. It will guarantee that you start there. Otherwise, you don't have, you know, you don't have any place to start. So you have to have the proper place, and that's the base register. Right. So once you add both, okay, you 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 be getting what what we call absolute address. Now, with that absolute address, now you can compare that address with the boundaries. So. The boundaries, okay, which you use at the bottom here. So that address should be lower than the boundaries. Do you agree? Otherwise, you get out of this region. So how do you compare using a comparator circuit? That it's basically something that compares bits. Two, num two numbers. Okay. So when you do an if, if I larger or equal something, you are using a comparator in the CPU. Did you know that? You should have learned that in computing systems. If you haven't, you're learning here. Okay. So, right. If it's within the boundaries, great. Don't do anything. If it's out of the boundaries, what do you do? You tell you tell the operating system, send a send a message to the user, say violation of address or something like that. And you stop the program. Okay. So it's a hardware signal that dotted error. And then the operating system will get that and send a proper message to this. Okay. Is this clear? What's the bound register doing again? It will tell you, okay, uh, you can go from let's say let's say the top, let's say for the sake of simplicity, this register is zero. Bound register so say, will tell you, okay, you can go to uh, address 0x1000, let's say. So that is the limit of the region that you are allowed to uh, access. So you can access any number in between, any address, fine. But if you go out of that, I'll block you. Is this clear? So, uh, to organize your memory, you split it, to, it into small partitions, okay? So this full memory, this full address space that is composed by program plus data plus stack is split into same size partitions called pages, okay? Is this clear? Uh, right, and the frames or segments, okay? Is basically those areas dedicated to programs, data, or stack. So, for example, you could have uh, your memory split into 14 pages. Yeah, why 14? Ask the author, I don't know. So, you could have one program using A0 until A3, another program using uh, B0 until B2. So A will occupy from zero to three, B from four to seven, four, from four to six. You could have a third program, C, okay, occupying those positions. And assuming that B finishes, you have the whole there. Now, if another program will come, and that's the point, a D program, and that program is using five pages, that program will be allocated the way you see. So, Three are free there, so you put three, and then you need two extra, okay, you put that. So as you can see, they are not contiguous. So the operating system should have a table saying, okay, program A is in zero to three. Program B is, sorry, program B is not there. Anymore. Program C is from seven to 10. Program D is from four to six and 11 to 12. So that is managed through tables, called page tables. 
So each process will have a page table. Okay. Uh, so that you will know how and wh where these pages are and which pages you are using. Then obviously, with the, with the pages, you use this to find out exactly where you are physically in your memory, basically. So the process from going to, from virtual address, which is the address that you have in your program, to the really physical address is not immediate. It goes through this, but it has, mo it has the pages in the middle. Okay, so this is another example. And this is what you have in the middle. Okay. You have some relative addresses there. Okay. Uh, in the middle of, part of your partition. And then what do you do with your relative or virtual address? What do you do is try to, to uh, split it, in, it into a way that you can use pages okay and you can use uh, the offset inside that page okay what is the offset the offset would be uh, something like the difference between the start of the data partition and the effective uh, address of where that is. So it will be employing the beginning of that partition or that segment as a reference. That, that's the idea. So when you see this stuff, sorry, when you see this stuff, okay, you basically you get your address, but you are going to transform your address into a physical address later. So, but how does that work? First, you are going to have to go through the pages. I'm going to explain this later. But first you have to go through the pages. And then later, with the pages plus the hardware that I have mentioned, you are going to get the final desti destination. I mean, the physical map. So these are just examples of addresses. So the first one will be in the middle of page one. Okay. The ones that I put last week, where were they? Where, where was ADDR brackets zero? It was at the first position of the M mapped error. Remember that? How many pages I created last week? One page. So it was like page one, for example, or page zero, creating just one. But instead of having four, 478, which is the offset, my offset was zero because it was there already. Do you understand? So to find out where that is, you don't tell the full address. You say, okay, now I'm in page one plus 478 instead of I am in that big uh, binary number or even a number in that's one that does not matter. So you say okay now in page one plus that number because then you know where the operating system will look at. It's just a matter of saying okay you are in row number for example you are in row number okay one let's assume that this is zero one you are in row number three, four, and so on. Instead of telling, okay, one, two, three, blah, 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 you are in the, I don't know, 12th, 13th.